Greetings everyone. This is my first video from Cressbrook Dale for a while. I've managed to get a kind of uh, uh, small selfie stick from my son. Can't find my all singing, all dancing one, which I'm a bit annoyed about because it costs £35 and it was really helpful to do videos. But anyway, I'm having to, to make do. And um, it's a beautiful, beautiful, warm day. A little bit cloudy, but uh, at least it's not chilly. It's not quite so autumnal today. So I thought I'd come out here with Kobe. Oh my goodness, he's doing a poo. Hold on. I dealt with that with a, a stick and a flick, <laughs> not a poo bag, which is always the preferred option. So... Uh, Oh my goodness, strong times. I woke up during the night actually and uh, made the mistake of switching on my phone and read a, an email from Keir Starmer, well the Labour Party. I'm on the mailing list of all the main parties so I, I get like updates. Now I think Keir Starmer did a speech yesterday, I believe. I haven't seen it but I, what I did receive was an email from Keir Starmer. And in it, he was basically saying, oh, things are far worse than we thought they were. Oh, we're billions of pounds in debt. And the con party, the Tories, I call them the con party. The con party hid it all. And uh, we're gonna, it's going to take years to sort it out. And um, then he was going on about... Uh, there aren't even enough prison places for us to put all of the people who are doing the rioting and the crimes and we've had to let people out. The only way we could bring those rioters to justice was to to um, let, let uh, existing prisoners out early. <laughs> I mean, he was almost talking about prison places, a bit like you might say, oh, there aren't enough places for... Um, ill people in the hospitals or there aren't enough places in in school for our children <laughs> you know i mean it, it's like the only solution to the problem is to to build more prisons you know i mean uh, it's very interesting actually because um, this week um howard and jude came to bakewell in their camper van and um met up with them uh and it was really sweet to see them again because I hadn't spoken to them for a long time. But you may know Howard and Jude. Um, they're both astrologers. And they were saying to me, because we inevitably got talking about politics. Now, Howard's a staunch Labour supporter, but he's more of the kind of uh, grassroots Corbyn, Corbynite and, and uh, not particularly a fan of Starmer. And I think a lot of Labour people are the same. Um, but they know if they speak out against Starmer, he'll get, they'll get booted out. So I think there's a lot of, uh, of, of uh, Labour MPs who are, are not the biggest fans of Starmer. But they were saying to me, have you seen Keir Starmer's astrology chart? And I, I'm, I'm a big fan of astrology. I mean, I've, I've been a sort of enthusiastic amateur really since I was a teenager. And I've attended loads of workshops over the years. I, I watched Kaipatra, Rick Levine, Pam Gregory. And so I've learned a lot through, just sort of through osmosis of just following astrology for decades now. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. And I do believe that it is a, a cosmic language. It's like the universe is speaking to us all the time through signs and symbols. And uh, astrology is a kind of language. Um, so people who say, oh, well, how could how could Pluto possibly be affect what's happening on planet Earth? It's just a tiny little planet, like bit, millions of miles away. How, how on Earth could that possibly affect us here on Earth? <laughs> they kind of missed the point, because this isn't about Newtonian physics. This is about consciousness and an intelligent, divine intelligence which is whispering to us through signs, through symbols, through astrology, um, all of the time. And so all we're required to do is just slow down, uh, tune into the cosmic whispers, shall we say. So they were saying about Keir Starmer's chart, that he has got sun 
conjunct Pluto in Virgo. His birthday is actually on the 2nd of September. So this year, his solar return is the dark of the moon because there's a new moon on the 3rd of September. Um, so it's like, it doesn't bode well. The way that they explained it is like, um, because Virgo is all about housekeeping and cleanliness and healing and, um, but it's kind of quite perfectionist and pernickety. Uh, so I've got quite a few planets in Virgo, so it makes for quite good accountants and detail, attention to detail. Um, and Pluto is the planet of transformation and the underworld and death and the eighth house. It's kind of quite shamanic. It's the shadow. Uh, it's the kind of what lies beyond the veil. It's Halloween, though, all those kind of things. So um, they they were saying that Sun conjunct Pluto is a bit like I'm going to clean up this country, and even if I have to kill people to do it, you know, it's kind of like that Sun conjunct Pluto energy. And of course, the implication was sorry, I'm having to hold my hand down a bit because it's got a very short handle. This uh, selfie stick. So I'm having to hold it in the air, changed hands now, see how long I can keep this up. So this, uh, this communication from Keir Starmer, it's kind of almost like the equivalent of what we had with the austerity measures of like, there's a huge mess we're going to have to sort out. I'm the man to do it. It's going to have to be tough. You know, we're going to have to take tough sanctions, tough measures. Uh, the implication was, of course, that uh, we're, we're all going to have to pay for it through higher taxes and and we're going to have to really clamp down hard. That was really the gist of it. So the first thing that I opened my when I when I went back to sleep and I woke up again this morning, the first thing that I tuned into was a, a brilliant video from The Woodlander. And I'm going to put the link to it below because it just absolutely hit the nail on the head about uh, about where we're at um, and uh, I won't go into to detail about it now just to say well, I'm just headed here into um, uh, into the entrance to the forest now my son MJ he camped out here at Crestbrook Dale he's very into shamanism and he spent a long time with the tribes in South America and he camped out here under Lady Big Tree. So that's Lady Big Tree. She's the guardian tree to this forest. So her skirts descend over this little area and here is the entrance to the forest. Now, I'm gonna show you this. If I might have to stop the camera, hold on. So while MJ was camping here, he created a sacred fire and you can see this is in the shape of a heart if I go around the other way. Now, um, there's a lot of talk about, ooh, you know, campfires, ooh, that's dangerous, but we're talking here about a, a sacred fire. We're talking about a fire to um, Tatawari, which is the grandfather. And the essence of Tatawari is that the trees here we are at the entrance to the forest. So let's just uh, pan around and show you this amazing forest. There's Lady Big Tree and the entrance. Um, so the spirit of Tatawari is that um, the trees absorb the sunlight. <clears throat> uh, and my son actually found this bendy stick. I'm digressing. He found this bendy stick and he recovered all of the uh, ribbons which had been ripped down by the locals. These were our Beltane ribbons and he, uh, he brought them out. So I, I wound them around the stick and, and placed it through into the entrance of the forest here, just as a little, uh, a little shamanic entrance. And also we recovered some of the Tibetan prayer flags, which had been uh, also ripped down by the locals. So we've hung them up here just as a sweet little offering a little um it's beautiful to have entrances an entrance is literally creating a spell it's creating a magical spell and we put little stone uh sculptures little 
these little piles, zen kind of stone piles. I've got put a few of them around the place. Um, so go back to Tatawari. So the idea is that the the trees absorb all of the light of the sun, and then they they give that back. It's like um, Aini, a sort of recip sacred reciprocity, where they give the light of the sun back through the fire, through being the fuel for the fire. So this is a sacred fire, and uh, it contains many offerings to the land, many blessings, many prayers. And um, <clears throat> it was done in a very beautiful and controlled way that did not put anything at risk in this forest. Um, so there's something very beautiful about the sacred fire. And uh, honoring the forest here is so beautiful and peaceful. I did actually camp out myself um, a few weeks ago, not here. I found another little spot elsewhere in the forest, quite a nice secluded spot. And it was so beautiful just to sleep on the land. And uh, there was, at one point there was this owl and it was the only bird that was singing. It was like twilight and there was an owl and it, it was, it sounded, I wondered at first if it was real, but it, it was hooting. And then it kind of flew from branch to branch and it kind of encircled the whole of my encampment and it was hooting. Um, and it was just absolutely beautiful to just have this single owl, like the spirit of Athena, Minerva, um, the owl. Um, it's a very sacred symbol of the divine feminine, actually. Uh, a lot of people might say, oh, the owl is related to Moloch, but I owls of symbolic in many cultures because uh, of because of their wisdom and being able to see in the night so um, yeah it was absolutely beautiful to just uh, sleep on the earth so healing and obviously when you sleep on the earth your dreams are so vivid and um, the only pollution here really is um, I'll turn the camera around actually again hold on yeah, so the only sound pollution really is airplanes. So um, that's one thing in the night. You can really hear that kind of jumbo jet kind of seven roar of a 737 going over every now and then. I guess we must be on the flight path from Manchester here, I would imagine. So uh, that was one thing I could hear. But apart from that, there's, there's absolutely no road noise and... Uh, it's uh, really beautiful just to hear the bird's song. And then, of course, the creatures start outside of the tent, don't they? And it's like, um, oh, my God, what is it? Is it, is it a badger? Is it a, a deer? Is it a local? Is it a Crestbrook villager? <laughs> you know? Um, but, I, you know, obviously lots of little creatures in the forest come out at night. And there was a little squirrel in the morning, so I think he may have been the culprit. But uh, it's so beautiful to reconnect with the land. And this is the essence of what the woodlander was saying in the video. So I, I will put a link to that video below. Um, and he was talking about affordable housing. Now, Starmer has basically said about lifting planning laws and building 1.5 million affordable homes. But of course, the government's idea of an affordable home is basically estates of kind of persimmon or, you know, uh, Barrett homes, Bellway homes, those, those kind of estates that are popping up all over the country, um, which are kind of like Minecraft houses. That's how Lynn describes them. You know, the kind of houses that your kids design on Minecraft, kind of Lego brick houses like on Monopoly boards, with handkerchief-sized gardens and paper-thin walls. And um, uh, I'm sure they're probably building more insulation these days because of all of the kind of net zero uh, rules and regulations. Um, but, you know, those houses are still... You're still going to have to find well over £100,000. And 
um, you're going to have to be a wage slave to get the mortgage to fund one of those and have a sizable deposit. So in truth, they're not really affordable housing. And um, as someone said to me, a lot of these new homes are not actually going to the kind of indigenous British population, shall we say. They're being snapped up by uh, foreigners, Chinese, and I, I guess a big proportion will go to um, people who are arriving into this country and in need of, uh, in need of somewhere to live. So, um, in terms of whether it's the solution that is really going to help our children, that was a big question. So it was quite interesting that the, the Woodlander was talking about his projects where they are uh, coming together and crowdfunding, purchasing woodland and uh, creating cabins. And he was saying, you know, he's, uh, he's got a template and a plan uh, on how to build a cabin for £3,000. And so that's their plan in the woodland. So we're talking about semi-permanent structures, which don't affect the, um, the ecology, which are causing no harm and are truly affordable. So, um, hold on, we've got voices. Sometimes that's people on the other side of the valley. It might be people on the lower footpath here. So I'm headed down. Let me just turn the camera around here. So I'm headed down what is now a bit of a increasingly slippery slope because we've had a bit of rain. So this, of course, is where the steps were. But um, I have been meaning to do a video on this, but I, I hadn't actually quite got round to it. I have got the footage, but um, uh, it's part of a much bigger complaint against the Peak Park Authority who came and who basically brought a huge truck all the way, drove it, broke through our gate, drove all the way down. They flattened, you can see here, they flattened a lot of the... Um, what was growing here this was all beautifully grown it's all been flattened and they have ripped out the steps which were here and this is back to being a steep treacherous slope which will become increasingly muddy as the rains come luckily a bit of the limestone gravel that was on the steps is still here which is making it a little bit easier to walk and less slippy but this will be a steep, muddy, treacherous slope, and I have already written to the Chief Executive Phil Mulligan of the Peak Park Authority, in inverted commons, because I certainly have never consented to his authority, and basically uh, stating that he will be liable if anyone has an accident here. You can see, I mean that there, I just slipped, just, absolutely treacherous and there was no reason whatsoever to remove these steps is pure command control but unfortunately this is what we are dealing with now with these authorities who um, <coughs> are supposed to be public servants <coughs> but uh, it's gone way beyond that now because it's got to the point where the government and the authorities believe that they have the right to com command control and dictate to the people and are in consistent violation of the people's common law rights. So um, <clears throat> the removal of these steps is absolutely outrageous because essentially they have made it so much more difficult to walk this land and some of our uh, owners are, are quite elderly and have got walking issues so they won't be able to walk down here now that the Peak Park has essentially denied them access to their own land. And it was one of our <coughs> members who put these steps in as a gift, actually, as a gift to our community and to the walkers. We had so many people thank us for those steps. Um, let's just go through here. Kobe's disappeared off to the bridge. And this is the little bridge over the brook. So this is where our land ends at the brook. Although it does continue 
up the whole western side, headed north for probably another at least 250 yards. Um, so we own from the skyline to the brook, it's deep, deep forest through there. But anyway, we're going to go around this way and head back and um, head back around the lower footpath. So uh, it's quite overgrown down here. It's lots of uh, rain and sun and uh, we're going to head round to the Ravensdale cottages. Kobe. Kobe's being sick. We're eating grass again. Go on then. Off he goes. Yeah, so we are in a bit of a precarious situation because we have the authorities, the government, who are taking a quite a, a kind of totalitarian kind of communist stance um, asserting their command control and violating the people's rights and and I said it in my video on RFK the God bless of America video uh, he was speaking out about uh, freedom of speech which is a important thing in America it's the First Amendment to their constitution is the right to freedom of speech, and of course it is a it is a human right. It's a common law right. But um, we've already seen so many people been uh, put in prison for sharing content on social media. Now, um, this raises a question of what what is freedom of speech because. The minute you start putting rules around that, like you're allowed to say this, but you're not allowed to say that, um, that is a, an impingement of people's um, rights. Now, of course, then comes a fine line because if you are in a place where you are inciting violence or, um, you know, speaking hatred, um, being racist, um, you know, so of course that is when the, the lines become blurred and, um, of course the common law principle, and we're, we're great believers, or I'm a, certainly a great believer in common law rights, and there's a responsibility in common law rights, it doesn't give you a free pass, um, you have a responsibility to cause no harm, injury or loss to your fellow man and woman. And so, uh, whilst on the one hand, you have, in God's eyes, you have unlimited rights, your rights end where someone else's rights begin. And so your obligation is, as you're going about your, your business, as you're, you're going about, you're living your life, as you're speaking your truth, you also have an obligation and responsibility to cause no harm, injury or loss to your fellow man and woman. And so um, once you embody common law principles and common law rights, then it kind of becomes natural that you respect other people and other people's rights and whilst you stand in your own. So so ultimately what we're talking about is a self-regulating community that does not have to have a kind of uh, strict headmaster with a cane uh, dictating and threatening uh, punishment if you do not comply. So as we the people take back our power and stand in our sovereign rights, there's a huge amount of responsibility for us to organize ourselves, regulate ourselves, and uh, behave in a, in a way which honors our fellow man and woman. And uh, in essence sees that the true enemy <laughs> 
if there, if you want to say that there is an enemy, uh, the true enemy is all those who would um, deny us our lawful rights through um, through this kind of fascist dictatorship, totalitarian control. Because that is, that is the true threat right now. And I think that is essentially what the woodlander was speaking to. So this idea that the state can dictate to the people what they can and can't do, um, as opposed to the true function of the state, which is uh, the servants of the people. And of course, governments and authorities will always attempt to justify their actions by saying we're keeping everyone safe and that is the classic line classic line used in covid wasn't it we have to keep everyone safe and they use that line keeping everyone safe as their justification for totalitarian measures or bulldozing through their agenda and obviously back in covid that was coercing people through forcing and shaming people if they did not get the experimental Britney Spear. And now we have a new regime and now we are in the realms of being threatened and punished if we speak out. And uh, so this is the challenge. So here I am speaking out questioning uh, what's going on. So who knows? I may be next for the gulag. Um, and this is the thing, is that uh, if we fall into fear and like, oh, I better not say that because just in case something happens or, you know, the police come knocking and I get arrested or blah, blah, blah then we're under control because of course the false matrix is built through fear. So my message will always be keep the faith, stay strong, keep building your communities, especially keep building your offline communities. And I have to say, it's so beautiful. I absolutely relish all of those opportunities to meet offline um, in person, it doesn't matter even if it's just a few of us sitting, having a glass of red wine and discussing politics and not being on social media. And um, of course, we still have our online communities like the People Speak Out. But increasingly, I am so relishing being in those groups where we are completely free to voice without feeling we're under surveillance. So just our little stand in the park group being here on the land at Crestbrook Dale. Um, a little group of us usually come every Saturday so if you fancy joining us we're usually here between 11 a.m and 2 p.m 2 30 p.m depending on the weather sometimes we abandon <laughs> if it's pouring with rain and we're cold um, but but quite often we're here uh, you know 11 till 3 on a Saturday and of course stand in the parks every Sunday morning in Bakewell from 10 till about 11.30 and also meeting loads of groups meeting in all sorts of ways. It was wonderful to do the hustings actually in the, in the whole election campaign and people coming to the hustings and then meeting, uh, talking to, to people afterwards. And yeah, so it's good to grow your communities outside of social media. And um, let's come out of this digital surveillance and reconnect with the land, build our communities. Um, and I absolutely agree with the Woodlander. It's time for us to reclaim our common law rights, to come together, to acquire land. Um, it's interesting that we were one of the first communities that actually did that. And oh my God, have we been persecuted. We were infiltrated, I believe. We were infiltrated very early on, not just this group, but um, 
another one of the Inner Sanctum communities which formed um, back in 2021 um, because they didn't want us to succeed. They didn't want us to create a precedent. Um, they needed to uh, shame us and publicly um, condemn us and divide us and conquer us. And that was very much the agenda. And you can see why, because the minute that we, the people, start to acquire land, start to assert our common law rights, start to create our own version of affordable housing, then we are not, and growing our own food and becoming self-sufficient, we are not so easy to command control. And that's why <clears throat> communities like ours were such a threat and are such a threat to the status quo, which is all the more reason why it's time, if you haven't already, to start seriously thinking about how you can uh, join forces with your local people and uh, um, start becoming self-sufficient in whatever small way you can. So as I say, I'm gonna put the Woodlander link below. It's a great video. I do suggest you watch it. Maybe get in touch uh, with him, uh, get in touch with us or form your own community and do your own thing locally. But the more of us that do this and take the initiative, the better, because uh, uh, I have a sense it's gonna get a whole lot darker um, before we burst through to the light in these last throes of Pluto in Capricorn. So sending you lots of love from a beautiful, sunny and leafy Crestbrookdale. Bye for now.